Hey everyone, I'm Agonix here and welcome back to a brand new video here on the channel. Today's video is about 10 more tips and tricks for when using Godot. I made a video a while ago going over 27 basic tips and tricks for when using Godot. Consider checking out that video if you haven't already. You guys may already be aware of some of the tips I talk about in this video and that's totally fine, but I thought it'd be a cool idea to go over 10 more small but useful tips for when you are working on your Godot projects just in case you might find them useful. Anyways, let's get right into the video. When you select the material, you'll notice how there is an icon for your material that shows up in the inspector. Did you know you can actually rotate this material around whilst holding down your left mouse button and moving your mouse around? This can be useful for if you want to take a closer look at your materials, and this is only something I figured out recently when playing around with a material in one of my projects. Let's say for example you've done a bunch of work in a scene and you've realised to yourself that you've messed up to the point of needing to go far back on your progress. Instead of pressing Ctrl plus C heaps of times, you can simply look to the right where you have your inspector menu and change the tab over to history. Here you will see the whole history of changes you've made to your scene in that particular session. Just scroll down and select the state you want and you'll be taken to that point in history. This is very useful if you've made a bunch of progress on a scene and then you've realised you've messed up or want to do something different. This is again something I only figured out by myself just recently after messing up with animations on a project of mine. I was just able to go right back to the beginning of my scene session and it was all fixed. By the way, do keep in mind that the history of a scene will reset whenever you leave your project. The history tab only saves the progress you've made per session, but will reset whenever you close and reopen the project, so do keep that in mind. In the search section of your scene's hierarchy, you can search for the type of node rather than the name of a node by putting t dot dot at the start of your search. As you can see here, when I type t dot dot control, the settings node shows up despite the fact that the node is called settings and not control. And the reason as to why is because the type of node this settings node is, is a control node. This can be useful for if you would like to search up node types in a scene rather than the names of nodes. Another thing I forgot to mention too is that you can use g dot dot to search for groups of nodes as well. When I search g dot dot skibbity, for example, it comes up with my nodes that are in the skibbity group. Did you know Godot 4.4 comes with Jolt Physics installed by default? Jolt Physics is a physics engine made for Godot that you originally had to download from the Godot asset library. Many people consider Jolt Physics to be better than Godot's default physics engine, so it's common for people to download Jolt Physics and add it to their project. However, as of Godot 4.4, I'm pretty sure, Jolt Physics has been added as an extra feature of the engine. To change your project's physics engine, just go into your project settings, search up physics, and click on the 3D tab underneath the physics label, and here you'll find the option to change your physics engine. As I said, if you're using Godot 4.4 or later, you should see the option to use default Godot Physics, Jolt Physics, or Dummy Physics. Jolt Physics being added to Godot by default is great for people who prefer to use it, and in case you didn't know, Godot 4.4 has Jolt Physics installed by default now. Did you know you can toggle the Godot editor to be in full screen? Click on the editor tab at the top of your Godot editor window and you'll see the option to enter full screen if you want to. You can also alternatively press Shift plus F11 as a shortcut. Did you know the Godot editor has a function to take screenshots? Just like with the last tip, if you click on the editor tab, at the top of your Godot editor window, you'll see the option to take a screenshot. You can also alternatively use the Ctrl plus F12 shortcut. After taking a screenshot, you just need to go to your project tab and click on open user data folder, which is where you'll find the screenshots you've taken of your project. I personally don't make use of this feature since I usually just use Windows screenshot feature, but if you find this useful, there you go. Also, I've made a video before on how to actually take screenshots uh, in g using code in Godot, so, you know, actually doing GD script coding. So if you want to learn how to do that as well, uh, there's a video that you can find on that. If you're debugging your game and you'd like to see the collision shapes of objects as you're playing, there is an option for that. Just click on the debug tab at the top of your Godot editor window and you'll see a few options here to make things like collision shapes, paths, navigation and avoidance visible. Just tick the boxes you want and then when you launch your game next, you'll notice the elements you have ticked have become visible. For this example, I'm using visible collision shapes. This also allows you to see raycast collisions and if those are properly hitting colliders or not. 
Overall, pretty useful for if you want to debug collisions in your game. Let's say for example you want to change the texture filter on your UI elements of your Godot game. Well, did you know instead of going through one by one and changing each of their texture filters individually, if your UI elements are a child of a control node, you can just change the control node's texture filter and that'll change the texture filter of all the child UI elements too. So the point of this tip is that if you have UI elements as children of control nodes, you can use the control nodes to change up its UI elements as like a group rather than individually, which saves time. You can also set the color of UI elements by changing the modulate property, which as you can see, is changing the color of the child UI elements. Did you know you can set a custom theme for your Godot editor? To change the theme, go into your editor settings and then to the theme tab where you'll find options to change up your editor's theme. There are some presets you can choose from, however you can also set your own custom theme colours too. I've actually made a YouTube short on this as well. Did you know you can set a custom font for your Godot editor? To change the font, go into your editor settings once again, and this time remain on the main editor settings tab. Next, enable advanced settings, and you'll see the options to set custom fonts for the engine. You can also even change the font that you code in if you want to as well. So those there are 10 more basic tips and tricks for when using Godot. Consider liking and subscribing if you learned something or enjoyed this video, and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.